this series of videos is a step-by-step -step guide to making your first Android application. We'll be focused on a simple calculator and in this video we'll make a very simple application where a user increments a value displayed on the interface using a button. This is the application that we're going to, to develop in this video. So we have a number is displayed in the interface and the user clicks on increment and the value is incremented. We'll also change the colors and the design so that you can see based on the Android settings for light mode or dark mode you can see different colors. So I can show you here I'm going to change the dark mode back to the application and we'll configure our application to change the colors based on the light mode or the dark mode. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new project. Select empty views activity. Next. I'm going to name it calculator. And keep this like so. For language make sure you have Java. Finish. And you should let your IDE prepare the project. You can see it here at the bottom right corner. If it's your first time, it can take some time, but uh, I have already opened Android Studio before, so it's going to be much faster. So let's wait for our project to build. And then let's start browsing through the files that Android Studio generated for us. Alright, now we have our main activity which is a Java class. This is where we put our logic. We go to the resource folders, we have drawables. Here basically we have the vectors that uh, our application would use. Then we have layouts, these are the interfaces that are displayed to the user. Here in map map you can see the icons or the logos that you're going to use and here you'll have the values like uh, colors, strings and uh, the theme that you're, you're using for your application for example here you can see the colors that are defined in your application here all these strings your application contain this is basically used for translation if you want to have your application uh, used in multiple languages so you can define uh, the translation of each uh, term. Then you have the themes. This is the light theme and this is the dark theme. Uh, we'll get back at these later. So let's close these and let's get started with our UI uh, main activity here. It's in the layout. Basically what we need to have is a text view or this element here you can see it's a text view. Let's change the text. Let's click on split here to see the code. And in the text here I'm gonna place zero. And we're also going to add a button. To do that you can go on this palette here and drag and drop button to your interface. Then use these buttons here to align with your view. This is to center it and I'm going to give it a distance of 50 between the text view and the button. So we have these here. You can see the text is auto-generated. Let's try to rename some settings of what was generated. For example here we'll have uh, increment and the text view looks good. Let's now change the IDs here to make it uh, 
more relevant. So here btn increment and here tv value. So tv stands for text uh, view. And change it here too. And let's now go to our Java class for the logic. Basically, what we are going to do is first define the views that we are going to use, like the button and the text view. So let's go back here, define our variables, private button, click on enter to import. So btn increment, then private text view, tv value. Right, now that we have our two variables, we need to initiate them. So here, I'm going to create a method called init um, views. And here, I'm going to click on alt enter to create the method. And then we're going to define the or initialize those variables. So this dot btn, btn increment equals find view by id or r dot id dot btn increment this dot tv value equals find view by id r dot id dot tv value so basically what you see here is exactly the ids that we have defined here for example i have my id of the button to be this if i want to change it to let's say write it that way. If I go back to my main activity, it's re it's not recognized because in the view associated with this interface, Android Studio did not find that ID. So let's go and rename it here. And you can see it's recognized. If you want to know which view is associated with this Java class, you can see it here on, on create, you can see the content view. Here we associate the layout, which is the main activity to this class and any ID that we are using here is verified in this layout itself all right now that we have our init views we what we will do is listen for action or events that the user can do like in our case the user will click on the button increment so we'll have to listen for any click on that specific button to do that let's create a method called click listeners for now we only have one but let's keep it that way this dot btn increment so we select our button and then we add a click listener I'm going to use a lambda function and here we are going to define our logic so here what we are going to do is increment a value so first we need to have the value that we're going to increment. So let's go ahead and create the variable. So here, integer value, or let's call it displayed value. And here we're gonna go here, this dot displayed value plus equals to one. Now that we are incrementing our value, but how are we going to verify that the value is actually being incremented. Here we can use what we call logs. So I'm going to create a log d for debug and here I'm going to add the name of my variable which is displayed value and then I'm going to show a message. For the message it has to be a string so let's do string that value of and we add displayed value. This will basically show this in the log when the application is running so that we can see what's the value of that element after being incremented. So um, I'm gonna go back to my uh, virtual device right here and I'm gonna close this application and let's run our project and see what we have configured so far. So let's give it time to build.
right, our application is being installed. Our, now that we have it here, we can go in Android Studio and click on Logcat to see the logs. And let's go in our application and click on Increment. So you can see here, the log displays the value. First it's 1, and then it's 2, and then when we click on the button, it gets, gets incremented. So now our increment logic is working. What we need to do now is to display this value in our interface here. So I'm going to stop this back to our code. Uh, lower the log cat. Here, after displaying this to our console, let's change the interface. To do that, we're going to write the value to the text view. So this dot tv value dot set text. Here we have to add string. So string dot value of this dot displayed value. Now that we have this, let's rerun our application and we should be able to see the value being incremented in the interface. Let's try that. So the value here is being displayed and since we still have the log.d when we clock, click on the log at, we can see that the value is displayed in the log and in the interface at the same time. Now that we have our logic working, let's try to implement some of the best practices, such as uh, here we have a text increment. Let's use this text in the strings values. To do that, we add a tag called string. And for the name, we give it increment. And here we paste our value. And we go back to our main activity and we need to reference this element here. To do that, we use add string slash and then here we write increment. And you can see that the value did not change because it's referenced here. If you want to go back to see this element, we can click on control and then click and then it takes us directly to the strings. We can do the same in here, instead of starting the value with zero, we can click on this and change it to, for example, click to increment or click on, sorry, click on increment. Let's copy this, go to our strings, we do the same here, string, click or value initial value this is here initial text view value so we go back here and we reference it so string slash this and you can see that it's been referenced here and it's displayed here this way if we want to configure some translations later on it's going to be centralized here that these strings are going to be much easier to translate from here rather than from the view itself. Okay, now back on our application, let's rerun that again. So here we have click on increment, when we click on it, the value gets changed. Instead of starting from zero, we have a text that tells us what to do. All right, now that we have this ready, let's try to customize it a little more. So back to our values, let's go to our theme. I'm going to start by changing the phone settings to light mode. Back to our application. So the color is purple here. Let's go in the light mode, which is this one. And inside this tag, let's add an item and the name we're going to call color primary. This is basically the color of the buttons and also the color that you see right here on the top bar. To do this, let's go to colors here and create a tag. What I'm going to do is control D to duplicate this line. And here I'm gonna 
give it like for example blue and click on this square to change the color so let's click on here and select for example a darker blue like this for example and back to our theme I'm gonna reference that element the same way we reference our string so color blue once we have that let's rerun our application and you can see that the button color changed to blue and the top bar too if we go now and change the phone setting to dark mode and reopen the application it's now purple if we want to change this we should copy this element here and go to our themes night and do the same for the night mode I'm going to use a different color so I'm going to duplicate this so here blue for night and I'm gonna change it to a lighter color like so and let's go in the themes for night and add this reference it's apply the changes by rerunning the application and you can see that the color here is different now we have a slight difference in this case the text that you see here is purple if we want to change the color of the text we have what we call item color on primary this property is the text that is displayed in any element that has the primary color. In our scenario, we are just going to use the white color. So let's apply these changes. And you can see that the color is now white. We can change it here by going to this reference, add in, for example, a gray color or um, something like this for example back to our theme and reference in it and you can see that the color of the text would change to gray it's not visible here but you, you get the idea um, and you can see that our application still works either on light mode or or in dark mode let's change it back This is it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to share them on the comments. And I'll see you in the next one.